that's not OEM from factory at all. No bueno. this Toyota Camry, it's a 2016. Um, technically not doing a Munchkin review, I'm not gonna be driving it. This video is showing what you should be aware of when you're going to a used car dealership or buying a car in general. This specific vehicle was bought from a used car dealership by one of our customers. It's here today to fix an issue uh, that they essentially bought it with, that they did not know about until they tried to get it serviced. So. I'm going to go over what you should look for when you're buying any sort of car, especially a used one. One of the first things you should note is of course any sort of damages, but a big thing that you should note, and this is coming from like a paint person, meaning Fred pointed this out, um, is the panel gaps. So the hood, you know, doesn't have even gaps throughout, it also is kind of sunken in, it's not level with the fender. So the hood gaps are, are not the greatest. So right here, you can see on the fender, there was some damage um, that <laughs> it's like they, they kind of didn't try to fix. I don't really, yeah, it's, it's not great. So definitely some damage on the fender. And this is what I was talking about. It's not level at all with the fender. It's sunken in, should be level or above at least, or basically not how it <laughs> looks right now. Another thing I noticed on the front end is that in the mesh, there's some electrical tape just dangling. Let me see if I can get my hand in there. It's right there. Some electrical tape. So what was that supposed to be holding together? I don't know. Speaking of panels though, every single panel gap on this Camry is not correct. I mean, wide to narrow, this is, Eh, it's okay. This is just, I mean, there's chips here, massive scratches uh, along the side. The bumper gap isn't great. You can see that something was up with the edges of it. It definitely went in for a really quick respray and then they just sent it. Again, with the panel gaps, not great. I mean, this red mark, I don't know what that's from um, this door, the driver's side door, it's not even like they, they, they didn't even try. I mean, it's got all of these scratches. Again, with the gaps, I mean, this one's a little bit more even, but it still goes from really wide to super narrow. Not sure what happened when they brought it to the body shop before they put it on the car lot. That's a pretty bad dent there, and this is all misshapen, a little crunchy, so. They try to repair it. You can see this is how it was supposed to look, this line right here. Uh, and they just kind of <laughs> gooped in some paint or possibly Bondo filler. I mean, it's got the little pores. So who knows what they try to fix that with. See, this is what it's supposed to look like on the driver's side. It's supposed to have that nice line uh, that it does not have on the passenger side. <laughs> it's got this really big scratch as well on the passenger side, as well as on the A-pillar. They just, you can definitely tell this was recently resprayed. I mean, it's got paint chips that they just sprayed over rather than sanding down. So that's not great. There's also in the door, another chip right there. They didn't really care about the paint job on this. The bumper's got some stuff on it. Like that's some really weird gnarly scratches. Uh, these are some really bad scratches right here. Uh, this is a, they definitely hit something. <laughs> uh, more paint chips that they just painted over. All right here. Another telltale sign that it was uh, resprayed recently. There is a silver on the window. So they didn't mask it very well because silver got through. Oh, and would you look at that? more paint chips that they just uh, kind of painted over. They didn't really get in there very well. I also just realized that 
And it looks like all the tires are from 2018, so uh, they're four years old. So another thing that you need to keep an eye out for, old tires and an old battery. Car lots don't start up the cars very often unless someone asks for a test drive or they're moving around the lot. So the batteries die very quickly. And when I worked at a dealership, I had a lot of people come into the service center complaining because their battery would die a week after they just bought the car and they'd have to replace it. It's because they jump started the car before you took it for a test drive, you charged it up a little bit while you were driving, and it only lasts so long because it sat for how many months to how many years? So, also keep an eye out for that. Well, this tire's from 2019, so that doesn't match. I just realized it's a different tire completely. All of the other ones are Century tires. That one's an Iron Man. Huh. Most of the time with interior, it's really easy to clean up and vacuum up, make it smell really nice. So there isn't anything in the interior that I noticed that was bad. Um, but again, it's the easiest thing to make look pretty because once people see the interiors, they're thinking, this is where I'm going to be every day. I'm not going to be looking at the outside of the car. I'm going to be inside the car. So they focus on all the features inside the car rather than looking at anything on the outside. Uh, so, you know, of course, used car dealerships do what they can to detail the interiors of cars. So obviously, I'm not going to have any complaints about it. I'll show you guys a couple of quick shots of this interior just so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, they're so easy to clean up and make look nice. It's almost like child's play. I've spoken too soon. I noticed this just before I closed the door in the driver's side. It's like someone tried to pry the driver's side door open. It's, uh, there's a bump, it's sticking out. I mean, Definitely looks like it was messed with somehow. Yep, you can see right there. That's roughly where they stuck in uh, whatever they were trying to pry it with. That's, that's not good. <laughs> so this car is actually here because another shop refused to work on it. Uh, it came to their shop just, I'm assuming for a general look over. They didn't really tell us what it was there for, um, but they did tell us what they found. Let me show you guys really quick. So the AC belt is off because the bracket that leads to the block is actually broken and um, it looks like they had JB welded it before uh, and the JB weld broke. So let me see if I can find it for you guys. We haven't brought this in to look it over just yet. Typically a lot of used car dealerships will go into the engine bay and do the trim shine or the back to black, you know, clean it up really nice so it looks fairly new and fresh and everything. It's because all the plastics are really easy to make look beautiful while underneath it is just god awful. There's probably oil leaks up the wazoo. It's just don't be tricked by the shiny black plastic pieces because it's covering something else up. That or they're just trying to distract you and make you think, you know, oh it's so pretty. But really there's some uh Monsters under the bed. Battery uh, terminals are a little, uh, little chewed up, but needless to say, that does happen quite often, so eh, not terrible. Fan and fan shroud are covered in the Toyota pink coolant, so that's um, interesting. Obviously, all the AC stuff is disconnected. Um, that's basically what it's here for. We're going to hopefully fix it if we can. Of course, with any used car, there's most likely going to be dents and damages and stuff like that. Um, it's just good to be aware of the damage. I'm not saying that don't buy a used car with damage. It's just, what damages were there? <laughs> how many accidents does it look like it's been in? <laughs> or uh, how many times did they try and fix something and actually make it worse? Or not actually fix it at all? So, damages aren't bad. Just not good. The water pump isn't hooked up, which is not good, um, so I have to pull it in as quickly as I possibly can. So I'm going to leave you guys here and I'll be right back. Quick look 
underneath, something's leaking. Not sure what, but there's some wet spots. Could be, oh, oh, kinked line. That's great. That's what you wanna see. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> So subframe definitely has some damage, got crunchy. So definitely wasn't a front end accident. So rear end seems okay. Brandon just noticed oh, something. No. What? That's not a bracket. What is it? That's the block. So it's not a bracket, it's actually the block itself and you can see all the failed JB Weld around it. Um, that's not fixable. That one too. The one on the right is also cracked. Oh, it's and JB welded. welded. Yeah, that's that's great. That's uh, that's not something we can fix. And then where they go into the uh, lower part of the block, um, right? Where is it? Right here. You can actually see the chunk where that bolt goes is missing. Oh. And underneath it is another bolt hole for the compressor, <laughs> and on the side over there. And I think there's a bolt broken in this hole. So, so yeah, yeah, the uh, front end subframe damage caused all of that to engine. go bad. <laughs> it, needs, it needs a lot more <laughs> than we can uh, offer it right now. Well, so on the frame rail here, you can see a shoddy weld, which I guarantee you the factory does not do. You can also see the frame rail here and how it's bent. And then this is ground away or welded. Um, yeah, how this is all bent right here. Mm -hmm. You can see where this was done. This is not factory stuff. You can see here where welds were done and ground away for a new core support. There's supposed to be a metal seam here, but it was just bondoed on. Um, you can also see back here in this frame how far back the frame was affected where it's bent there, and then this is more like weld, filler, grind it out. Okay. In here where the ABS mounts, you can even see the mount here, it's not where it needs to be. That hole is supposed to be where this tab goes in. All the sand marks here. So this car... Old back corner. Uh, the best part about this is this probably has a clean title because this was done or this was crashed when the car was worth a lot of money. So they were able to sell it to some shoddy repair shop for, I don't know, probably like three or five grand for the car. The shoddy repair shop fixed it, still under a clean title, because a clean title doesn't mean it's never been crashed. So you need to look for all this stuff if you're gonna buy a used car, mainly in the front end, because this is where the important stuff is. The trunk, you'll see similar stuff, but it's not that important. Definitely new struts, ground from O'Reilly, yellow guy, core support welded on, kind of hard to see, there it goes, plastic in the way, but it's welded, promise you, damage underneath where the battery is, not good, smashed heat shield. So basically, I, I know uh, when you go to buy a used car, you obviously don't have access to a lift. If you can, try and take it to um, a shop that will do a pre-purchase inspection if the car dealership will allow you to. But all the stuff that we pointed out didn't need a lift to point it out. So that was very clear as day. The damage that they tried to repair, all the issues that were from the front end accident, um, especially that subframe just being crimped and bent. Terrible. Uh, so we're gonna actually tell the customer, unfortunately, that's something that we can't fix. They need to take it back to the used car dealership. And this is something that I want you guys not to be gypped on ever. Uh, so make sure when you're going to a used car dealership, you know what you're looking for. Check out the engine bay. Ask if there was any sort of uh, car accidents. Of course, they may or may not tell you, but if you're worried about not catching the right things, bring a mechanic with you if you can. If not, basically look at everything in the engine bay from hoses, um, AC lines, you know, just the, the very basic stuff, the motor itself, all the plastics around it, the metal, the welds, you know, ask questions while you're there. 
uh, and you might be able to get some information out of them, you might not be able to. They may or may not know what happened to the car before, or they might be lying. You never know with used car dealerships. They're allowed to say whatever they want to because at this point they're just trying to sell a car to you. Um, so check everything over, you know, from a, a rear end accident, a side swipe, to a front end. All of those could cause damage to a point where you shouldn't be driving the car. Uh, I mean, this one is one where, yeah, you can still drive the car, but the block itself was cracked. The subframe is bent in on itself. I mean, it, it's definitely not a car that should have been bought in my mind from a used car dealership, but they didn't know what they were looking for. Again, that whole thing I was talking about before, they got caught up in buying a new new car for themselves, and so they, again, probably didn't know what they were looking for. So look at the basics, look in the engine bay, take it for a test drive, but the longest portion of looking at a car, a used car, shouldn't be the test drive. It should be looking thoroughly through the car and every aspect of it. I mean, go down to the nitty gritty. Their whole job is to sell you this car. So you can take as much time as you want to make sure that this car is the right car for you. Hopefully this helped you guys in some way or another. Be on the lookout when you're going to a used car dealership. Don't get gypped. I will see you guys next time.